for organizing such a wonderful event for such a wonderful event and bringing in so many kids from different parts of the world in one single platform congratulate ma'am thank you thank you sir today the topic is game changers today the topic is game changers and you know life keeps changing even without our knowledge when i studied in the school there were computers were not invented and cell phones we never had but later on so many inventions came in place and we restricted students to bringing in cell phone into the classrooms now life has changed classrooms are conducted through cell phones so the life keeps changing likewise the game also keeps changing that is why today we have named this topic as game changers i can see all the game changers now on the screen so many young bucks in your life you are going to become the game changers what exactly today you all learn vedic mathematics let me tell you something i am a bsc mathematics students and today i have gone into an aviation professional if you know basic mathematics you can become any professional because maths is very very important in life even to calculate your time if you want to tell your time you need to know mathematics isn't it you will have to multiply by 5 only then you can you know give your timings so mathematics comes lifelong mathematics when you learn mathematics it will help you to improve your brain it will also in fact you know when you learn mathematics it will also help you in giving you the problem solving skills your financial management so right thing you have done by joining the vedic maths unfortunately when i did my bsc mathematics nobody was there to come and teach me vedic mathematics i had to do the normal method normal method but i understand vedic mathematics is nothing but the traditional magic and tricks which they use it to solve the problems in a very simple method i wish if there is no age restriction i will also join the ganivas academy and learn mathematics because life there's yes, a life is a learning process till we die life is a learning process till we die there are so many things to learn in life dear students since i can see different age group different age groups so i don't want to go very deep into game changers because i see mostly the kids first of all you know i need to congratulate rishwan krishna for his wonderful prayer when i saw he was closing his eyes deeply involved in singing the devotional song see that is the kind of involvement each and every student will have to have in whatever you do when you have the right involvement what happens you will understand things better you will gain more knowledge and you will be in a position to perform better so main thing is involvement anything what you like you will have to do it with involvement i think you all know sachin tendulkar do you all know sachin tendulkar a very good cricketer who recently retired isn't it i am a fan of sachin tendulkar do you know the story of sachin tendulkar he failed in eighth standard he is not a very good academician studies did not you know come well for him but his parent was closely observing him he was very good at cricket so what he did the father every day took him to the grounds allowed him to play and today india or the world got one of the best batsman cricketer why whatever sachin did he did it with passion the last day he was going to announce the retirement he said he is going to announce the retirement and that day also before the match he was practicing in the nets they went and asked him sir today you are going to retire why don't you take things very light today also you are putting in your hard work and you are practicing you know what sachin tendulkar told sachin tendulkar said no the fans are coming to see my performance till the last day i need to give the best my involvement will have to be there so people the students those who get involved in whatever they do they become a game changer what is game changing how many of you all watched 
the Olympic Games. I doubt very much whether you would have watched all those. Very recently, the Olympic Games are going on in Tokyo, and our hockey team, they were performing the match. Very interesting match. It is do or die to win the bronze medal. So India was playing against Germany. Initially, Germany took the lead, but later on, India chose them. And finally, what happened? India was five and Germany was four. And there was a penalty corner. Penalty corner, they were supposed to shoot the goal. Penalty corner is always easy to shoot a goal. So the Germany was all set to at least make the game draw. So when they did, finally, our Strijish is the goalkeeper. And he blocked the goal. And India won the goal, bronze medal after 41 years wait. So India was striving for the medal for the last 41 years. And finally, we won the bronze. And who was the game changer here? One single man, Strijish, in the last moment. And I am proud to say, Strijish is a Rotarian like me. He also belongs to the Rotary Club in Kerala. Kerala and we are waiting for his arrival to felicitate him. He changed the entire game just because he saved the goal. He saved the goal. He became the game changer. And India has broken the history and we won the bronze after 41 years. That is what a small deed, a small deed what you are going to do can change your entire life and you will become your game changer. You will be the winner in your life. You know, India, it's very well known for mathematics. All the mathematicians, the famous mathematicians, they were born in India and we need to feel proud of it. You all, I don't know, Vedic mathematics, they were also taught you about the Srinivas Ramanuju. Okay. He was one of the best mathematicians. We also had Aryabhata. We had Aryabhata, again, a very famous mathematician who was born and he invented so many theories. And he is the one who deduced the value of pi, 3.14. Because I am a math student, so I am telling you. And we have Shaguntala Devi. The women are also equally powerful. We had Shaguntala Devi. Another name for her was human computer. Okay. She can multiply 13 digits random numbers in 28 seconds. And she multiplied and gave the exact 13 digits multiplied by 13 digits random numbers. She gave the answer mentally in 28 seconds. And the same answer, the computer took 62 seconds. It took one minute and two seconds, whereas Shakuntala Devi in 28 seconds she was. So she was so faster than computer and she entered into the Guinness Book of World Records. So we had that kind of great mathematicians, mental mathematics. She was so good in mental mathematics. So dear students, you're all learning those kind of Vedic mathematics. This is going to be your game changer. It is going to come throughout your life. This mathematics, what you're going to learn throughout your life, it will be very useful. Whatever career you are in, whatever profession you are in, you need to have the mathematics. I love mathematics. I love mathematics. But unfortunately, my MSc, I could not do my mathematics, but I deviated into aeronautics. But however, each one, even in aeronautics, time calculation is very, very important whether the flight needs to take off. Okay, what time, what speed it has to fly? What is the time calculated to arrive at the destination? The mathematics plays a very, very important role in my life, even now, even now. So, dear students, since you have all come to perform in an event today, let me wish you all good luck. Let me wish good luck. And I'm eagerly awaiting to see all your performances. And let me also wish the Ganivas Academy to, and I will also encourage them to do more such events for the youngsters because everything is happening through virtual platform. There is so many good things about this virtual platform. This virtual platform can unite people around the world and we can bring in the best of the speakers from any part of the world. 
virtually into your house, into your classroom. So, so many good things we have learned in this lockdown, in this lockdown. So, students, as I said, I have seen so many young buds. All these buds will have to be one day a game changer. And I wish you good luck in all your future endeavors. And I will also wish you good luck in the current event which are going to take part. Thank you so much for the time which you have given me. And I also thank Madam Banu for inviting me to be a part of this event because I always would love to address the kids. But you know, I wish one day it happens physically, then I can come and see you all face to face. Thank you so much. Thank you. And a good day to you all. It's our Over pleasure to, you. to have you, sir, actually. Thank you so much for your uh, thought-provoking speech. I think it was to the kids and kids would have taken the very essence of it. May I, uh, so we'll start the program. May I request uh, Kanishka to start with? Kanishka, you can unmute and then you can start. If you have any presentation to share, you can share your screen. Um, I don't have a presentation to share, but I um, do have the a speech, a kind of a talk. To talk. Yes. Yes, please. Um, and next, Sharada, this, you can be ready. Yeah. I think this could also be a game changer in a life. Um, moving into a new house. In my old house, um, I had to wake up really early in the morning at 6:30 in kindergarten and first grade. But here, now I have to wake up at 7.45, and I also get better um, sleep than before. And also, I have more room in this house. And in our old um, school, we um, when it snowed, even if there is a couple of snows and it was icy on the road, they wouldn't cancel um, school or have a snow day. Only after a couple of inches, they a couple of inches, they would um, cancel school or a snow day. But here at our old house, was if it's icy and it's um, snowing during um, the bus drive, they would cancel school, which I think is safer for all the students in the school. And that's all. Very good, Kanishka. In fact, you know, I love the way you speak, your accent. Which part of America are you in? A North America, Ohio, a Delaware, Ohio. Oh, you are in Ohio. Very good, okay. I've never been to Ohio, but I've been to other parts of America. Very good. In fact, you know, which one you love? You love snowing, whether you want your schools to be canceled, or you would like to go and meet your friends in the school? Which is better for you? I would like to go meet my friends at school and learn more about math and mathematics. So you need to pray that it should not snow heavily. Only then you yeah. can go to your school. But I do like to have a couple of snow days. Time oh, to time. Yes. It has to be balanced, as you said. Yes. You need to have a break as well. Very good. Wonderful. Wonderful. Thank you so much. And you need to have a good sleep. You said in your new house, you are able to sleep better. Yes, sleeping yes, is you. mandatory. You need to have a sound sleep so that your day begins well. Very good. All the best. And you really did well. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, Kanishka. You. That was very nice. Right. Thank you. My pleasure. Thank you, Kanishka. I think it's 11.30 p.m. for you. You can leave the room. And that was good to hear from you. Thank you. You can see the video later, okay? It is a recorded video. You can catch up later. Okay. Now, uh, now off to Aradhya, please. And Hamsini, get ready after that. Aradhya, you can unmute and then you can talk. So ready, set. Okay, I have a presentation to share. Yes, you can share the screen, Aradhya. Okay. Hey everyone, my name is Aradhya Kamp and I'm Today I'm going to... Louder, please. What? Louder.
Aldo, please. Oh. Well, hey everyone, my name is Anandya Vyakarnam and I'm in fourth grade. Today I'm going to talk about the light bulb. The light bulb is now the world's electric light source during the night because, because before the light bulb, people could not work at night. After the light bulb came, people started staying up late at night and became more productive too. The light bulb, along with other great inventions like power plants and power stations, this the light bulb, along with other great inventions like power plants and power stations. This artificial lighting helped people work day and night, like cooking when you got home from work, reading books longer, writing letters with lamp lights, etc. Light bulbs are drastically improving the quality of life. Now, the question is, who invented the light bulb? Thomas Edison, about 20 people had their own version of a light bulb but in the year 1879. Thomas Edison was, was the one who successfully made the light bulb, which is now our nighttime light source. Thank you. Very good, Aradia. You remind me of my daughter Aradia, that is my brother's daughter. She lives in Indianapolis. Her name is also Aradia. You spoke very well about Thomas Alva Edison. Do you know about something about Thomas Alva Edison? He sets an example for everybody to accept failures, which is the first stepping stone of success. Thomas Alva Edison failed 10,000 times before he invented the light. Because when we invented the bulb, he fell 10,000 times and his friends came and they criticized him. They asked like, him. Pardon? Do you mean by like literally 10,000 times or? Yes, he failed 10,000 times before he could invent. And when the friends have criticized and when they asked him, he said, he found out that 10,000 times this will not work. He took everything very positive. So he sets an example that every failure is a stepping stone for your success. Wonderful. You spoke so well. Okay. And he, I always love Thomas Alva Edison like how you do. Thank you so much. Wonderful. Thank you, Aratya. That was a bold speech. Can I call Hamsini now? Next, Atira, be in line. Okay. Um, so for this, hello, everyone. My name is Hamsini. Can you be to the camera? You're off the camera, please. Yeah. Hello everyone, my name is Hamsini Vyakarana and for this game changer topic, I, I chose um, Michael Jordan. So, you have anything to present? What? Do you have no. anything to present? No, okay, good. So you can see this, you can see the camera, yeah. So, so, the, so um, even though, even, even though Michael Jordan had made various, um, Mental problems in life. He never, he never quit basketball. He he led his team winning six NBA National Basketball Association champions. Um, yeah, national champion. Yeah. Um, and and he is considered the, one of the one of the best um, sports athletes. Thank you. Um, sir, uh, I think Hamsini is done. Hamsini, um, yeah, okay. Good. In fact, you spoke about Michael Jordan, my favorite basketball player. And again, you know, he sets an example for so many people. He, they did not allow him to play basketball in his school days. They rejected him. But later on, he started practicing on his own. And finally, he entered the national level games. And today, Michael Jordan is well known, like I was talking about Sachin Tendulkar, when it comes to basketball, Michael Jordan is the first who comes in the mind. Okay, wonderful, wonderful. Thank you so much, Amshini, for talking about Michael Jordan and bringing him back into my memory. Thank you so much. So, thank you, Hamsini. That's good to hear from you. I call upon Aradhya, sorry, Atira next. 
and Kavana, be ready to be next in line. Atira, you can start. Can I? Atira, your voice is breaking. I think you have to the call and call you back. We are getting a cat noise from you. And also, do you have any presentation to presentation to share? I think uh, Atira will join back after leaving. Kavana, are you ready? Yeah. She has a network problem. Yeah. Now we can start. So once you are done, we can call up one later. Um, okay. Hello, everyone. My name is Karna. Today I'm going to talk about game changers. Game changers are people who change games. Inside that game changer topic, I'm going to talk about the mobile. First, mobile was invented in 1940 in US by AT&T. First, mobiles were two-way radios used by taxi drivers and emerging vehicles. Did you know there is a Captain Cooper from Matulona was the first company to mass produce the first handheld mobile phone. It was heard as old. Today we have three G and four G. Some fun facts about the mobile phone. Nineteen twenty-six. First mobile phone service was offered to first class passenger on road between Berlin and Hamburg. First 1992. First ever SMS short messaging service was sent in US. 1998. First phone launched by Finland. Finland. Same company that owns That's the need of the day, actually. Thank you so much for it. <laughs> what, wonderful, wonderful, Karuna. In fact, you spoke about the mobile phones. In fact, you know, it reminds me of my very first mobile phone, which I picked up in Bahrain when I was flying back from London. That mobile phone used to be very big, like a, half the size of a brick with an antenna sticking out of it. And those days, using a mobile phone was very, very expensive, both your incoming calls and outgoing calls. But today you spoke about the various development of mobile phones, how oh, the Androids, the touch phones, and what are the benefits of the mobile phones. Today, I think life is lost without a mobile phone. Everything can be done in mobile phone. And I know that reminds me three days ago when I was rushing to a place where I had an important work, I realized I forgot my wallet. My purse was left in the house, but with a mobile, I was able to do my mobile banking. I was able to do trading everywhere. Now Google Pay is accepted, even a roadside vendor, they accept the... So mobile has so many benefits. Like, as you said, we can make video calls. My daughter, she lives in Texas. I call her, I see her almost every day in the morning and the evening. So I don't have the feel of missing her at all. So mobile phone is very useful. And he spoke about it. 
wonderful kavana wonderful thank you very much thank you kavana it was good to hear from you and atira i think you are ready is the technical glitch fine fine now is that okay uh, can you yeah i can hear you atira you can start okay. next disha be online okay uh, i don't have a presentation atira Hi. can we hear from you yeah Hi, my name is Asia. Have you ever heard about the world famous company Disney? Have you ever watched Snow White, The Little Mermaid, or Sleeping Beauty? Well, the businessman I'm going to talk to like to you on today is Walt Disney. On December 5, 1901, Walt Disney was born in Chicago, Illinois, to Elias Disney and Laura Cole. As the youngest child of four other kids, Disney was often bored and was poor. In order to do so, He took art classes and eventually got a job as a commercial instructor in Lab of Graham Studio. He was rejected many times because of his particular art style. He later moved to California and set up the Disney Brothers Studio with his older brother Roy Disney. When he was still working at Lab of Graham Studios, he was working on a character you might know as Mickey Mouse. He created this legendary character. In 1928, he based it on a mouse that occupied his dorm. Believe it or not, Mickey Mouse was rejected 300 times, but he kept trying. Finally, Mickey Mouse became accepted at the studios a few years later. That became his sort of fame. Many different art studios were calling him, meeting him, and even paying him for the rights to take the character of Mickey. He then contacted the contacted his older brother Roy and started the studio Disney Brothers. His next plan was to create a motion picture film and take over the film industry, but that didn't come easy. Though he was famous, the search for talented artists never seemed to end. He was finally able to put together a team of artists after four long years. Like he predicted audiences all of this they brought their sales up and as they created more movies they decided to create a theme park when Roy died this put Disney in depression and though he tried to work it was hard but he pulled through it with the help of his wife and created Disneyland in California as you can see Walt Disney struggled a lot in his career and life but still managed to pull through this serves as a life lesson that we should never give up thank you wonderful wonderful idea in fact you spoke about the walt disney everybody loves the disney characters isn't it whether it is mickey mini or goofy donald duck tom and jerry you will not believe let me tell you one secret i still love to watch the disney videos still love to if it is tom and jerry playing i will quietly sit and watch i will not change the channel and those days my daughter used to love so much and for a third birthday we celebrated because she used to love the mickey and mini third birthday as a surprise i took her to disneyland in france the place is called manila wale and later on i also i took her to california okay to los angeles to the disneyland i'm yet to go to the disney world in orlando but otherwise even now at this age i would love to go to the disneyland to see all the characters live performing there isn't it wonderful and today i am glad because the topic is game changers everybody they speak about the success story of famous personalities like thomas alva edison the then spoke about michael jordan and now we are speaking about the walt disney yes they are all the game changers in life where they struggled a lot before they could become successful wonderful adira wonderful though you had a technical issue in the beginning you did so well thank you so much thank you okay you are on mute you are on mute Ma'am, I think you are on mute. Who is the next? Yeah. Thank you, Atira. Can I can I have Sai? Sai Ashish. Can you unmute and speak? Yeah, Sai. 
Okay. And next, Bobby, be or it, be ready. I have a PowerPoint. I'll send a PowerPoint in the chat. And you can, can share it, sorry. Yeah, because I can't share my screen. I don't. Doesn't yeah. work. Yeah, you have it in chat. Yeah, it should be yeah, there. Yeah, got your. Hello. Um, download it. Oh, Hello, I have sent it with once again. I'll present it. Um, um, Banu, Banu teacher, Disha, next, right? Yeah, once again, I'm sorry, I forgot. Once again, let Sai finish and then Disha be online. I'm sorry, Disha. Sai, can you talk? I presented okay. your thing. Stop. Okay. Um, I can't see it. I'll share my screen once again. I think my sh screen is shared. One second. Can you see yeah. my screen? Yeah, Sai, you can listen. Okay. Disha, so, sorry, next you will be online. Sorry, dear. So, hello, everybody. My name is Sai, and today I'm going to be presenting about Ab APJ Abdul Kalam. And so, first, I'll talk about who he is. APJ Abdul Kalam. And full name Abul Pakir Jainal Abdul Kalam, born October 15th, 1915, died July 27th, 2015, Shalom. As an Indian scientist and politician who played a leading role in the development of India's missile and nuclear weapons programs. He was the president of India from 2002 to 2007. He was honored with several awards, inclu including the Bharat. India's highest civilian level for his contribution to national nations, space and nuclear program. What did he do? Dr. Kalam did a degree in aeronautical engineering from the Madras Institute of Technology and in 1958 joined the Defense Research and Development Organization or DRDO. In 1969, he moved to the Space Research Organization. He was the project director of the SLV-3, the first satellite launch vehicle that was designed and produced in India. From 1992 to 1997, Dr. Kalam was assigned advisor to the defense, defense minister. He also served as scientific advisor in 1999 to 2001 to the government with the rank of cabinet minister. His important role in the country is 1998 nuclear weapons, Tests solidified India as a nu nuclear power and established Dr. Kalam as a national hero. Although the tests caused great concern in the international community, in 1998, Dr. Kalam put forward a countrywide plan called Technology Vision 2020, which he described as a roadmap for transforming India from a less developed society to a developed society in 20 years. The plan called for, among other measures, increasing agricultural, agricultural productivity, emphasizing technology as a vehicle for economic growth, and widening access to healthcare and education. Abdul Kalam's family and childhood. APJ Abdul Kalam was born into a poor Tamil Muslim family in the Pil pilgrimage town of Rameshwaram, Tamil Nadu, on October 15, 1931. His mo mother, Achyama, was a housewife, and his father, Janul Abdin, was an imam of a local mosque and a boat owner. He was the youngest in the family, with four older brothers and a sister. His early years involved a lot of struggle. The financial condition of the family forced him to work at a very young age. He was rejected by the Indian Air Force when he applied. Son of a fisherman, he was facing many difficulties. He wasn't having money to continue his studies, so he sold man newspapers and earned money. That was no electricity in his home, so he used to read out the street light. Message to the next generation. Abdul Kalam said, My message, especially to young people, is to have courage to think differently, courage to invent, to travel the unexplored path. Courage to discover the impossible and to conquer the problems and succeed. Contribution of Abdul towards Indian space time. He was the project director in ISRO to help develop India's first indigenous satellite launch vehicle. At a time when India had at a time when India had had its own satellite launch vehicle or SLV, 
Dr. Kalam's efforts and hard work for over a decade made it possible for us to develop our first indigenous SLV. Abdul Kalam served as president of the Republic of India from 2002 to 2007. As president, Kalam promoted the advancement of the National Nuclear Weapons Program. Dr. Kalam was also devised as a 20-year action plan to Abdul Kalam's quotes, no family is perfect. We argue, we fight, we even stop talking to each other at times. But in the end, family is family, the love will always be there. Always use branded items in life. For lips, truth. For voice, prayer. For eyes, for hand, charity. For heart, love. For face, smile. All birds find shelter during rain. The eagle avoids rain by flying above the clouds. Problems are common, but altitude, attitude makes the difference. If you want to shine like a sun, just burn like the sun. Every pain gives a lesson, and every lesson changes a person. Facts about Abdul Kalam. Kalam was awarded the coveted civilian awards, Padma Bhushan, Padma Vibhushan, and the highest civilian award in India, Bharat Ratna. Even though the family was not financially well off, the children were raised in an atmosphere of atmosphere filled with love. In one of the books which Kalam wrote later, he fondly remembered how his mother would lovingly feed her own quota of food to the children and go hungry herself. In 2007, he decided not to con contest the presidential election again and stepped down as the president of uh, on 25th July 2007. He is known as People's Pre President and Missile Man of India. In 2015, the UN declared his birthday as World Students' Day. When Dr. Kalam was the president, he asked people to walk all the luxurious rooms and took a very small room for himself in Rashtrapati Bhavan. Why I chose Abdul Kalam? I chose Abdul Kalam because I think that he has achieved many things in his, in his life despite having difficulties. He has inspired many people. He inspired late Mr. Vivek to plant over 33 lakh trees. Thank you. Wonderful, wonderful, Ajish. It's not only your favorite, Dr. APJ Abdul Kala. He is my favorite. He is every Indian's favorite. One of the very simple and humble presidents we had, and a man who always loved the children. After Nehruji, the man who always loved the children and the youth was our late president, Dr. APJ Abdul Kala. You very well gave everything in detail about our late president. In fact, as you rightly said, he had dreams. And he also said, everyone should dream. And you know what is the definition of dream, he said? Dream is not the one which you are going to get in your sleep. Dream is the one which is not allowing you to sleep. You will have to dream something and you will have to chase your dreams. You will have to every day morning get up and chase your dreams. That is what Dr. APJ said. He is a missile man, aeronautical man. I also belong to an aeronautical field. So I love him the best. And he died again while he was addressing the students. So lifelong he spent. He wanted India to become the most powerful nation by 2020. I'm sure all the youths, the Indian youths, they are going to make our nation proud. We are going to make it powerful very soon. Wonderful presentation it was, Sai. Wonderful. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Good, Sai. You had a handful of data, I think. Good. And I'm also proud that you choose Abdul Kalam and it shows that you're rooted to India, though you stay in Australia. Good, Sai. So I call upon uh, Disha next. Next, Bavi B online. Disha, can you please unmute and then talk? I'll present your. Uh, Disha, can you start? Hello, everybody. My name is Disha Praveen. Today, I will be talking about the game changing innovation credit cards. What is a credit card and what is the credit card's history? A credit card is a small plastic card issued by a bank or a building society. It's a, it allows the holder to purchase goods or services on credit. In 1887, the concept of credit cards were created by Edward Bellamy by a book called Looking Backward. In the late 1930s, there were charge coins which were similar to credit cards. Materials that credit cards were made out of were celluloid, copper, aluminium, steel, and other types of credit cards have been, but anybody could use them. Yes. Okay. Credit 
credit card features. On the front of a credit card, there's bank logo, card network logo, expiry date, card logo name, and EMV chip. On the back, there's the magnetic stripe, signature strip, and card security code. Next slide, please. Yeah. Thank you. How credit cards changed our lives? Um, so now there's more space in the wallet to put your other things because it's not stuck with cash. Uh, many people can afford TVs um, and cards because they pay loans. Reduced usage of cash, which means they don't use cash, they use cards and Google Pay now. And positive impact on economy. Oh, I'm still reading the next one. I was still reading. Can you go back, please? Uh, positive impact on economy, which means the paper. Since cash is made out of paper, um, they don't chop down trees. They use using cards. A fun fact about gender equality is, in the earlier days, women needed a male guarantor to get credit. Credit cards introduced by Barclays to the boon and bane of credit card. The boon is um, convenient, easy to use, and can use it worldwide. Protection. Credit cards protect you from people using it for wrong purposes because it has your name and your details on it. Equated monthly installments, also known as EMI. It's um, loans. So, for example, if you have a TV and you don't have money to pay buy it at the time you can take a loan and pay uh, pay a uh, amount of money every month or week the banes are temptation to overspend you're like oh i have a credit card i can use it for whatever i want and you spend the whole day in a shopping mall just go next is credit risk credit, credit risk is when like you can get things confiscated if you don't pay for it I give my friend a pen and I'm asking for it again, but it's just a game. He won't give me because I didn't give her a pen that she gave me before. And the last one is psychological impacts. Because of the financial pressure, your mental health will be bad. Um, thank you for listening, everybody. I hope you learned more about credit cards. And you will spend it wisely. Thank you. Very wonderful, Disha. I think you are giving a message to all the adults like me how to use the credit card wisely. You know, credit card is a great invention, as you rightly said. You need not carry all the currencies, stuff into your wallet, and travel all the way. If you lose the currency, it's gone. But credit card immediately can block. It is very safe, and it's a plastic card. Saves a lot of space in your wallet. But only thing, as you said, you are given the boons, the advantages of credit card, and you also said the risk factors of credit card. If it's not used wisely, if you think the credit card is somebody's money and you keep buying things in the card and if you don't repay, then you are into very big trouble, isn't it? That's what many youngsters, they don't realize. They think credit card is just for shopping and they keep shopping. Unfortunately, they didn't pay on time. It involves a lot of penalty when you delay the payment. And as I said, they are in trouble. But other ways, credit card is a boom for everybody. Whenever I travel, the credit card comes very, very handy. And what I do, the particular country I travel, I go to the bank, I take a travel card instead of credit card, and I tell them, load so much money. Credit, this kind of money, whether it's Australian dollars or US dollars or euros, UK pounds, we load it and we go, it's quite safe. You can spend using the credit card. And in the Western countries, everybody encourage only the plastic money. Wonderful, Disha. You, you. It was an eye-opener for everybody. Thank you so much. Thank you, Disha. Thank you so much. I call upon Bavi now. Can you unmute more, Bavi? Do you have anything to present or you can talk as such? Yeah. Talk as such. No. I can talk. Okay. You saw your Madini Olympic facts and life story. 
Olympics. Yusara Madini is a refugee and has come to the Olympics to show everybody how important refugees no. are. Yusara Madini is a great swimmer and has and has had a very tough life. Yusara Madini's life story. Yusara Madini's house was destroyed in Syrian civil war. Madini and her sister Sara de decided to flee the Syria in August in August 2015. They reached Lebanon and then Turkey, where they arranged to be smuggled into Greece by boat with 18 other migrants, though the boat was meant to be used by no more than six or seven people. After the motor stopped working, the other Dingy began to to take on water in the Egan Sea. Yusara and her sister Sarah and two other people who were able to swim got in the water and treated over uh, treated water for over three hours until the engine started working again. And the group reached Lesbos. <coughs> they then traveled on foot to Europe to Germany, where they settled in Berlin in the in September 2015. Her parents and her young sister Sheet also fled also fled Syria in Germany and live in Germany. She captured the Yusara Madini captured the world's attention with her remarkable story at the age of 16. Now Madini is back and her mission is to fold to thrill in the pool and to remind everyone of the value of refugees. I'm almost. I think your time is all up. Can you make it fast, dear? Yeah. But Yusara Madini's birth name is Yusara Madini, born in 5th March 1998, age 23, occupation swimmer, height. Five feet six inches, one hundred six fifty-five millimeters. No centimeters. Country Zaria. Sport refugee on the team. Freestyle swimming. Whatever. Done. Hey, I think you have just uh, you're doing it on you're browsing it on the go. Is it? I I, I wish you would do it as a presentation or something like that so that you make a quick uh, view. Okay, but that's good to hear from you. Very good, very good, Bavi. In fact, you know, you spoke about Jusara Madani. In fact, how she is going to fight for the refugees. Yes, you know that if you come to America, I can see a lot of refugees who have taken asylum into America, especially America is a land where they have taken refugees. They have Sri Lankan refugees. They have refugees from Lebanon. They have refugees from uh, Libya. So many other uh, small African countries. And Tara Majani, as you rightly said, at the age of 23, she's a great swimmer. She struggled a lot in her life. And finally, now she's settled there in Germany. Wonderful, wonderful. In fact, you know, I think many people, those who don't know, at least now you created awareness about the Tara Majani and what is her mission all about. Wonderful, wonderful, Bhavi. Wonderful, Bhavi. Thank and, uh, you. Can I ask upon now? Shivi, you're online? Mm. Yep. Yeah, you can start. Okay. Um. So, 
Hi, today I'm going to be talking about Alia Ista. Uh, Alia Ista had a, a very hard life during her young age. She has had a hard, um, she has had, like, she has been a uh, refugee in Greece and she she was born and now she's competing in Tokyo 20. Alia was born in 2001 and lived in Greece. Her life was going well until her life changed instantly. She encountered smallpox and got a dangerously high fever and resulted a brain damage. It left her in a wheelchair and with high support of need and some difficulty speaking. When she went to primary school, to the other kids were sometimes cruel and often left. Ex- and she often felt left. Ex- she often felt excluded. The difficulty she had getting her words out made her made other children laugh at her. Uh, but that didn't make her stop wanting to go to school. Um, her dad was also encouraging and helped her a lot. When Alia was seven, she had to be hospitalized again. Alia's older sister got married and left the world. But soon after she was diagnosed with cancer, Alia's mother went to Norway to help her daughter while she was receiving treatment. Her sister would eventually recover at the same time Alia was dealing with illness. Alia's father, who was still in Greece, was diagnosed with much more aggressive cancer. He went to Norway to be with his family and died a short while later, leaving 16-year-old Alia in shock. A difficult time for the whole family. So many things happened at once. Uh, the family was unable to t- stay in Norway and return to Greece. With the war going go- going on in Syria, they applied for and received refugee state- status to remain in Greece. How she got into the re- refugee Paralympics team. In Greece, there were people selected to go to Paralympics, to the Paralympics team. So Alia tried and tried and practiced really hard. And now she is one of the Paralympics refugee in Tokyo 2020. And she wants to inspire other girls to be proud of who they are. Thank you. She was wonderful. You spoke about somebody whom others didn't even think of. The Alia, who is now participating in the Paralympics in Tokyo, and how she had a very painful life. She struggled a lot. And now she wants to set an example to the other people, to the other physically challenged, to the disabled. That she's, And I'm sure she's going to win some medals for her country. The struggle in the Greece. Everything you spoke about, in fact, it's an eye-opener for me as well. Let me also go and read more about Alia. Honestly, I don't know much about her, but it's becoming an inspiration for me. I will Google and I find out more about her. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Shivi. I call upon Rishman now. And next, uh, Mrithula, be online. Rishman, can you share your screen, please? Rishwan, can you unmute? Yeah. Rishwan, can you share your screen? First, you need to stop sharing the screen. You share, mine will automatically share. Share. Yeah, can you share? Rishwan, you're taking time. Share. Or else I'll call upon next. Rishwan, be ready later, okay? Rutula, can you start? Rutula, please start. Shaskin, share. Rutula, you can start, Rutula. Can you see my presentation? Oh. We can't. Yeah, okay, start. Hello, guys. Good morning, good evening to everyone. Okay. Sony is a game changer. Founder of this 
PlayStation is Ken Cook. And the Sony Computer Entertainment CEO in 1999. The Blast Rumor Workstation, which is a high end computer. The name PlayStation created the best computer in the Idea behind PlayStation concept. Children enjoy playing outdoor games such as hide and seek, and tug of war, foot races, hopscotch, marbles, and spinning tops. But when the weather was poor, the children had to stay. They, they, they could sing, read, or memorize poetry. Um, excuse me, I can't see a presentation. Oh, leave it. Let him do. It takes time. Let him do with whatever he has. No, I mean, I'm. He, did he was doing a presentation online. We can't see it anymore. No, that's okay, Kavana. I think he's. He doesn't know to present his screen. You carry on, Kavana. I think he doesn't know to present his screen. Let him talk. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. you. Can't see my presentation. Yeah, we can't see your presentation. Oh, that's okay, you can talk. It's taking much of your time. Once again. Don't, ma'am, don't worry. Don't worry, I can be here. I can wait till 11, not to worry. Okay, Rishu, I can present it for you now. You can talk. Once again, Rishu. Rishwant, I'm presenting it for you. You can talk, Rishwant. Rishwant? He needs to see you. Oh, can you see my screen? Yeah, yeah. I, your screen, I, I presented your screen. Can You can talk. He did an incredible help with PlayStation console. By giving entertainment, lockdown, rainy time, Snowy time and hot time. Vishwan, can you start from first? You are half the way. Vishwan, can you start from first? Hi, guys. Good morning and good evening. Sony, the game changer of PlayStation. The founder of PlayStation is Ken Kurta. Sony Computer, is a Sony Computer Entertainment CEO in 1999. Trust the world workstation, which is a high end computer. The name PlayStation created the best computer system. Idea behind PlayStation concept. Children enjoy playing outdoor games such as hide and seek, tug of war, foot races, hopscotch, marbles, and spinning tops. But when the weather was poor, the children had to stay indoors. We would sing, read, and memorize poetry. We did an incredible help PlayStation console by giving entertainment in lockdown life. Rainy time, snow and time, and hot time. I eagerly wait for weekends to play PS4. And we are restricted to play only during weekends. For our good, and fully enjoyed playing. Since late August, Kutagi has been working as the CEO of Tokyo's Asset Promo, an artificial intelligence startup company which is aiming to make affordable robots that can safely do physical work alongside humans in factories and logistics centers. To me, Ken Kutagi is certainly a game changer in technology. Thank you for hearing my words. Thank you, one and all. So, oh, which one? In fact, you know, you spoke about the Sony PlayStation. I know. I love PlayStation. As you rightly said, he tells you it gives you entertainment during the bad weather, especially you know, in the US when it's snowing, when you're unable to go out during weekends. Yes, it keeps you entertained. And unfortunately, now, the mobile phones, the games like PUBG, it's replacing the Sony PlayStation. But I would always encourage 
kindly use the plain patients so that is more attractive and that will be more helpful to you all rather using your cell phones so thank you so much thank you rishwan thank you rishwan but you must be ready on time you cannot have a play when you are on the event can i have nutula next um, good morning everyone i am nutula i feel honored for giving this opportunity to speak the topic game changers personally i feel that the one person and the perfect hero who fits for the topic game changer is our singapore's honorable former prime minister mr lee kuan yew who is also considered as father of singapore singapore is an island without any natural resources when singapore got independence in 1965 uh, the economic and social conditions were poor unemployment was wide a majority of population was living in the overcrowded housing without access to clean water sanitation or proper waste disposal but singapore pulled off a dramatic transformation and uh, achieved remarkable progress within 10 years because of this mr d for you this one man uh, made it possible by his strong leadership this this man made the world recognize tiny little dot in the map by establishing housing development board and economic development board uh, mr lee provided the singaporeans with housing and employment opportunities to develop the nation economic stability as there is no natural resources he developed the manufacturing and the shipping industries to provide job opportunities not only for the locals but also for immigrants he also developed a best and more accessible public transport system and to keep the city clean green and pollution free this trained lawyer a visionary leader uh, was singapore's chief architect he was a man with a mission to transform the small seaside town into a financial giant he performed a miracle in transforming singapore from one of the poorest to a highly sophisticated metropolitan city what today leadership is the quality to transport the vision into reality and this man has proven it Once again I thank you for giving me giving me this opportunity. Thank you so much. Thank you Mridula. Are you from Singapore? Mridula. Yes. Where are you from? I am from Singapore. You are from Singapore. Very good. In fact, you know, I also love your former prime minister Mr. B. In fact, I love your country a lot. My very first international travel was to Singapore in the year 1987. and since then i have been regularly traveling to singapore i have been every time i come into singapore there is something new there is some new attractions and every time i visit i never fail to go to sentosa i never fail to go to durang birch park i never fail to go into serangan road your mustafa i always love visiting singapore as you rightly said because of its leadership it has become though the country is very small with 25 kilometers radius the country it is taking an important place in the world map it plays a very important role when it comes to the port okay the free trade everything is happening and as you said it's very very clean and pollution free so the tourists would love to go to singapore again and again and the man behind was your former president your former prime minister mr lee It's wonderful wonderful he was a game changer certainly well spoken well spoken thank you but prathula you presented very well and uh, you, you were slow and your speech and it was very good to you. can i call upon johan next johan can you unmute can you hear me yeah we are not able to see you johan can you switch on your video also please Can you see me? Can you see me? Can you see me? Can you see me? Yeah, Johan, we can see you. You can talk. Okay. Okay. Do you have anything to present? If so, you can share your screen. No, 
I don't have anything to present. Yeah, please. Yeah, okay. Good morning, everyone. Today's topic is to talk about a game changer. I am, rather than talking about something, I'm talking about someone. Someone that has changed how the world works. So today I'm going to talk about Microsoft. Of course, everyone should know this name. They are the richest company in the world with a market capitalization of over a trillion dollars. However, this was not always the case. Microsoft started with two childhood friends, Bill Gates and Paul Allen. The original vision for their company was to make software for the Altair 8800, an early computer. Gates and Allen believed that if they could successfully create a software for this computer, they would catch the eye of many tech giants at the time. Paul Allen literally quit his job, which was quite a high paying job at the time, to focus on their company. And Bill Gates was a Harvard dropper. He was willing to bet every last coin on their small company. And guess what? They coded the software in Bill Gates' garage. It was a hard time, seeing as they had no other stream of income, so they had to keep going with their project. And thankfully, they successfully created a software for the Altair 8800 using their own programming language called BASIC. Both Gates and Allen were immensely proud of what they had created, but here came the first roadblock to their success. No one was willing to give their product a go. After all, they were just teens in their early 20s who dropped out of uni and quit work. They had to wait quite a while, but Gates and Allen were patient. They were slowly biding their time waiting for the moment when someone would take notice of that project, product. And finally, after calling Micro Instrumentation and Telemetry Systems, aka MITS, founder Ed Roberts agreed to give these guys a chance. And just a little while later, the two sold their code to MITS for $3,000, plus a percentage of royalty payments of up to $180,000. This, however, was not the company's big break. This would come a little later. Two years later, when Microsoft became public, they quickly earned over a million dollars in revenue. But that wasn't the end of the story. After seeing the need for skilled programmers, the two decided to relocate to Washington. And in that same year, Gates negotiated an agreement to open Microsoft's first international sales office in Japan. The company opened its headquarters in Bellevue in 1979. And almost a year later, they signed the most important deal in Microsoft history with IBM. And this partnership would propel the small company to something that is more of what we know today. And the rest, they say, is history. Thank you for listening. Rahul, that was short and sweet. <laughs> Uncle, we are not able to hear you. Okay, sorry. In fact, I muted to avoid the disturbance. Uh, yeah. uh, Mr. Jogan, you know, Jogan, you spoke so well about Microsoft. In fact, you know, it's everybody's dream to join the companies like Microsoft, the MNCs, how oh, Bill Gates and Paul, they started in a small garret and today what they are. You know, as you said, it's a trillion dollars company. And what is happening? How they started? You know, he is a dropout. He is a dropout from the University Harvard and afterwards, after many years, he successfully completed his graduation as well. If you go into the Bill Gates, if you see his biography, you can know that. Uh, the inspiration about Microsoft, as you said, now every at every home, people, they use the Microsoft, the Windows, it is so popular and as you said, he was one of the game changers in the software industry. Wonderful, wonderful, Johan. Thank you. Good, Johan. Uh, can I ask Jashwant? Jashwant, yeah. can you present your screen? So if you're not able to present your screen, you can just talk, Jashwant. you're ready can you respond Jashwant yeah we can hear you you can talk can you see my screen yes yes Jashwant, 
can you start? Uh, I think Jashwan that I has not speak on game change. Yes. And uh, we have. So I'm going to talk about a topic in game changes. So it is something that has not been. It is some. It is not someone, but it is something. And this something that is not man-made. It comes from nature. It is electricity. So simple definition. What is electricity? Electric power or charge. So people are also call it electric power, electrical circuits, electric power, and etc. So, now let's learn about the history of electricity. Almost in 2700 BCE, people remember the electric fish or the electric eel, which they call as the thunderer of Nile. People, people are supposed to touch them, this electric fish to just to cure themselves from headache. But he, those days electricity was kind of magic. But, but in 1600, when the English scientist William, William Gilbert wrote the magnetic in which he made a careful study of electricity and magnetism. This gave rise right to the word electric and electricity. Which made their first appearance in Thomas Brown's Theodoxia Epidemica of 1646. In June of 1752, Benjamin Franklin has reputed to attach a metal key to the bottom of a dampened kite string and this flew in a storm. So, so, there were so many sparks that came from the metal key, they almost touched the sand. So, he proved that electricity was needed. From nature. The recognition of electromagnetism and the unity of electric, electric and magnetic phenomena due to Hans Christian Oster and Andre Marie of in 1890 In the early 19th century, was when people started to create many things related to electricity. One of the most common was Thomas Alva Edison, who invented the first electric bulb. So, before we know about how is electricity a game changer, let's talk about what, what is a game changer. A game changer is an event, an idea, a procedure, or something else that affects a significant shift in the current way of doing or thinking about something. For example, electricity, of course, and the other one is the invention of wheels. So, now let's move on to talk about how. Electricity has changed a day to day life that you cannot even think about the life without electricity. Now, electricity has led to the invention of other game changer objects. Like, for example, TCC has talked about PS4 and cell phones and etc. And, and these were also game changers, but these come from electricity. Is the mother of all these and, and many other inventions that are made from electricity are the electric bell, the laptop, all the a few We use electricity in houses like lights, fans, ACs, TV remotes, TVs, etc. And offices, when it comes to offices, we are always use during presentations we need electricity. The current and also the gadgets like the laptop that teachers use to work. And in schools, teachers use electricity to make announcements during the assembly time, first during classes for the night stands. And other places like hospitals also need electricity for medical supplies, like the machine that shows the heart monitors and etc. ATMs ATMs also run on electricity and they are robots also run on electricity. So almost like each and everything, each and everything that you see today is runs on electricity. So, so electricity is a market.
Jaswant, in fact, you spoke about electricity and you rightly said, we can't even think of a life without electricity. And I'm just wondering how those people before the invention of electricity, how they live burning the animal fat as oil and they were using the lamps on the fire to have the light. Okay, as you said, the electricity is the mother of all inventions that has led to all the new inventions. And now even the automobile industry is switching over to the electricity, the electric bikes, the electric scooters, the electric cars have come to give a greener environment, isn't it? The world is going to become much greener. So they are going to avoid the fuel in the future. So electricity is going to play a major role in everybody's life. And that's what the next automatic automobile industry is going to look for. And everything is going to be converted into electric cars. Like in the US, you already have Tesla. And even in India, the Tatas have come out with all the uh, cars, which is going to be run through electricity. Wonderful, a very good topic. And electricity was a game changer in our technical, in our technology development. Thank you. Thank you, Joshua. I really like, I cannot come and ask me doubts in my topic. Oh, wonderful. That was wonderful. But I think everyone on mute. Yes, you can have it at uh, last, Joshua. And uh, one more thing, uh, sir, we have three more students who are uh, actually virtual in the virtual platform. They okay. have sent us recorded videos, three more kids. You can play the videos. Uh, time zone. Can we have just a few more minutes from your yeah, life? Please, please. Please, please, no, you can, yeah. Yeah, thank you. And the first one is uh, Gamana. She's in Australia. So they're not able to join the event, but they've sent us uh, videos. Which part of Australia, ma'am? Actually, I don't have any idea. <laughs> no problem. Okay, okay. Because again, like you, as Australia is also having different time zones. Okay. That's, it is a COVID time zone. Youngest of our uh, batch, actually, of our team. Oh, I see. Okay. Gamana, Gamana, in fact, you know, she spoke about COVID. Gamana, in fact, COVID is not only new to you, new to even all the older generation. In this last 100 years, we have never seen such pandemic. As you said, social distancing, wearing a mask. So we call it as SMS. Social distancing, wearing a mask, and sanitizing has become mandatory and part of our life. Like how we buy provisions, we started buying masks and sanitizers along with the provisions. We can't change. This is what we say, survival of the fittest. We need to adapt to the situation and change. And let us all pray together to ensure that the pandemic ends at the earliest and we are back to the normal life. Thank you. Thank you, Samana. It was all the way from Australia. Nice of you. And I heard that you are the youngest of it. Glad 
that in a very young age, you are able to do a presentation. Thank you. Thank you, sir. And one more student is from Norway. Is Achyut. Hi, my name is Achyut. I am from Norway. I'm a fifth grade. As we all know, the topic is game changers. How everyday life connected to technology is the widely accepted game changers. Let's, let's talk about some game changers which we could repeat ourselves. In fact, you are all the way from Norway, the Scandinavian islands. Very good. In fact, you spoke about the digital platform. Today, the world is performing only in the digital platform. I am a dean of a college and I know how the classes are conducted online and how even the exams are conducted using a digital platform. As you very well said, Mr. Ravindran of Baijus, he started the learning platform and Baijus have been very, very helpful and today it is Don't. very, very popular among the students here in doing a personal tutors, in doing a personal tutors. Wonderful, wonderful actually. I really appreciate you presenting your, you know, uh, your thing through digital platform. This is also through digital platform and definitely digital platform is also one of the game changers in today's day to day life. Thank you so much. Thank you, Akshit. I'm just last. This is the last one. He's Ashwin from UK. Here to talk about game changers. Game changers are people who have changed the world one way or the other. Some of these are Elon Musk. Elon Musk is a young person who has changed the um, kind of space in the first car in the whole entire world. These cars um, are good for the environment as they release any CO2 making um, um, global warming a less threat. Space is a company who is specialised in making rockets, um, usable rockets. This will help not, not wasting um, the resources we have on our Earth and um, making our Earth a better place. Solar City is another company. Even Solar City is good to see it. Make a whole city run by solar, which is also known as a renewable energy. Solar panels, um, the um, conductor of electricity, it and um, energy. This is my explanation about Elon Musk. Basically. 
I think Venkat's audio was not very, very clear, but you know, my understanding is he spoke about some Europe, he spoke about, he was talking about some renewable energy and how the solar panels, so alternative energy he was talking about. Uh, and unfortunately, Venkat, the audio was not very, very clear. I am unable to comment much on it, but however, I appreciate by you spending your time and doing your presentation. Thank you so much. Thank you. Oh, yeah, the students' presentations uh, ends here, sir. And uh, thank you so much for accommodating and adjusting your uh, time. We just took few minutes more. The, oh, by the way, you said you were, you were ready for 10.30, but we have taken uh, five, 10 minutes more. Sorry about that. And uh, we are really honored by your uh, presence and definitely your uh, game changer of your own, I think. So can you give a collective feedback or something like that? Sure, sure, ma'am. In fact, you know, as I said, I have another meeting at 11 o'clock and I was planning to log in by 10.45, 10.50, where I will have to address all the incubators, the young entrepreneurs here in Tamil Nadu. But however, it was a pleasure being with all the young kids. And especially today, I felt like Jaggi Chan going around the world in 80 days. In 80 minutes, I was going around the world. There were students from different parts, from the US, from Australia, from Norway, from Singapore. It was wonderful. In fact, you know, hats off to the organizer and hats off to all the students who made lovely presentations. And at such an young, early age, you spoke about different game changers. There were some which were new, a learning process for me as well. You spoke about most of the top famous personalities and some spoke about very good inventions as well. So, as I said, here, I think about more than 15 students have presented. If you ask me to rate them, I would rate everybody a first rank. Everybody did their part so well, so well. For this age, I'm telling you, it's really amazing. It's really amazing to come sit in front of a computer and do a presentation, it's not that easy. But you know, barring, barring all the times, you maybe you are sitting in different time zone, but still you were able to present it. You were able to present it and everybody did so wonderfully. If you ask me, every single student today who had performed is a game changer according to me. And I'm sure you are going to come a long way in your life and you are going to make your parents and your teachers proud. I wish you good luck in all your endeavors, in all your studies, and you be one of the game changers. Thank you so much for giving me an opportunity to be with the young minds. It was wonderful. wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. In spite of your back-to-back -back hectic schedules, you gave your time for us. Thank you so much, sir. And kids, definitely I could envision future game changers here. And your contribution towards the event will definitely meet the basic needs of underprivileged kids and hats off to you for that. Thank you so oh, much. I, sorry, I will take one more time. In fact, you know, I forgot to mention that yeah. this entire program is not only an event and it is for a cause. And I understand you are going to contribute this money to the underprivileged children. In fact, you know, I am a Rotarian and we have started this kind of activity in the school and we call it as I share. I share. And you know, we have a piggy bank in the school, we go and place it and we tell the students whenever it's possible, whatever the money, it can be one rupee, as low as 50 paisa, we will say you come and contribute, drop it in your piggy bank and we keep a deadline. Maybe after three months in presence of the students and in presence of the class teacher, we open the piggy bank and whatever the money collected as a Rotarian, what we do, we contribute equal amount of money from our side and we will tell the students to go to the neighborhood and there will be so many underprivileged who may be needing help. We ask them to do it themselves. We also contribute money and we do that every three months and this project is called iShare and most of the corporation schools, we don't go to the big schools because big schools they are capable of doing it on their own. We go to the corporation level schools, the government aided schools and then we inculcate the habit of sharing. The best idea is whatever we have, it is not for ourselves alone. We need to share. There are so many people underprivileged 
they are all you know much below and they are needy we need to render our help and that is what you are doing it through such event i am really grateful for that let such events continue wonderful wonderful so giving is happiness we share what we have so we share the happiness and we share little of our happiness with the other down trodden children thank you so much thank you so much sir and uh, thank you so much kids for your time also and wishing everyone all the best and we are really honored to have you sir thank you so much for being for the year thank you so much thank, thank you thank you one and all thank you bye thank let the groups us thank you so thank much everyone have a great time bye bye thank bye. you bye